Welcome, in this video I'm going to teach you how to obtain the Blood of Lathander, a legendary mace in Baldur's Gate 3. I'm going to start off by simply pointing you in the right direction of the quest, and then after doing that I will give you every step-by-step -step direction on how to get it in case you get stuck on any of the puzzles. If you're looking for the Blood of Lathander, it is at the Rosy Morn Monastery. This is where the Githyanki Kresh is, so if you're following Lazel's questline, you will already be on your way or here. Now, obtaining the Legendary Mace has kind of two puzzle sections, two different quests associated to it. The first one you can do as soon as you arrive at the monastery, and that is outside in the ruins of the monastery. You're going to collect three ceremonial weapons that you're going to place on pedestals corresponding to different dawn seekers at the monastery to find these three ceremonial weapons this is a great moment to turn away if you want to do the puzzles yourself are at the roof of the monastery at the eagle's nest in this room that requires you to either knock down a wall or break down a window from the other side where there is a guardian of faith it is right at his feet you need to take it down and in the winery which is infested with kobolds this one caught me. Uh, I couldn't find a weapon anywhere. Turns out it was on one of the kobolds corpses. You have to loot it, uh, but it took me a, a good long while. So make sure you check all of the kobolds and one of them will have it. You then put each of the ceremonial weapons on their corresponding pedestal. If you don't know how to do this. You just open your inventory when you're next to it and you drag it to the pedestal. It just goes out of your inventory and you can manipulate objects in the world. And each of the pedestals will light up. Once all of them light up, you can go to the back. A little area opens up with a pouch and inside is the Dawnmaster's Crest. The second part of obtaining it comes at the end of the Githyanki Kresh questline. So once you have finished all of that, whatever the outcome, I'm not going to get into that. If you are in the Inquisitor's Chamber, there is a little hidden passageway to the left. Uh, to the left, there's going to be two statues. You need to turn the one that's on the right towards the east and you need to turn the one that's on the left towards the west because they're for sunrise and sunset this will open up a secret passageway once you go down there are force fields and traps to continue i don't have footage of these but you'll see these really big blue crystals that you need to destroy to keep progressing i'm hovering over the location where they would be the first one you simply take it out it's kind of a tutorial then you turn to the left and go around this section. You will see a crystal on your way down. And then you have to go to the right and a hanging below will be the final crystal. You now reach the Blood of Lathander Mace. The mace itself is really strong. It's a legendary weapon in Dungeons & Dragons. Those tend to be really important. It comes with radiant damage, a passive that damages fiends and undead if they are even within its light and a level 6 evocation of Searing Light that is incredibly strong. If you're not familiar with Dungeons & Dragons, that's a really strong spell. That's stronger than anything that you get by leveling up or stuff like that. It's a really cool weapon. It's very valuable. I'm running a monk, so I get to use it, but it's a mace, so a lot of different classes can actually use a mace. As a fun little tidbit, Lathander is one of the greater gods of Faerun. He has shown up in other stories, campaigns. He's a big character in Dungeons and Dragons. He is represented with the sun, but he's actually the god of dawn because he represents the potential of a new day, a new beginning, kind of like the fool in tarot. The blood of Lathander is considered very, very important and valuable, and it's been represented other times as an extra thing or as a minor artifact in this case this this mace seems to have been made by the dawn seekers using four drops of lathander's blood which are kind of suspended and had a whole process to put them into the mace i think that lore wise that's really cool to make a sun mace with radiant energy that literally uses lathander's blood to give it its power but that's just me nerding out about lore. I hope this video was useful to you, that you learned something. And if you want more guides of all sorts for Baldur's Gate 3 and long lore videos, as well as coverage on all of the upcoming great games, make sure to subscribe. I'm Mugthief, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the internet.